Welcome to Fringe Pop 321, the show that believes the world is stranger than we think, but thinking should not be strange. One of the most frequently repeated claims of shows like Ancient Aliens is that megalithic architecture proves that Earth was visited by extraterrestrials in antiquity. The idea is that immense blocks of stone that comprise megalithic sites around the world could not have been moved by humans with or without modern technology. The only alternative, so viewers are told, is advanced alien technology, perhaps something like levitation, was used to move and create such monuments. Now, is that really the case? Do we really have to choose between no explanation at all and it must be aliens? Well, let's find out. Now, the most extreme example of the presumed impossibility of moving huge blocks of stone isn't the pyramids or Stonehenge. Rather, it's the Trilithon stones of Baalbek. Baalbek is an archaeological site located in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley, east of the Latani River, just over 50 miles northeast of Beirut. It's home to the Roman Temple of Jupiter. The term Trilithon refers to the three horizontal foundation stones at the Temple of Jupiter at Baalbek. The stones used at Baalbek in the Trilithon weigh in at an estimated 800 tons. Even bigger stones of the same style are nearby, abandoned by the stone cutters in antiquity when they cracked. For example, the stone called by locals the stone of the pregnant woman weighs an estimated 1,000 tons. An even larger stone was recently uncovered at the same quarry by a German archaeological team. That stone weighs an estimated 1,600 tons, or 3 million pounds. The question relevant to all these stones is obvious. How did the stone cutters who quarried and fashioned them plan to raise and move them to the location where they were to be used? Does it have to be aliens? Do we really have no alternative? Wouldn't it be great if we had some analogy to stones of this size that we know were moved by hand without modern equipment? Well, it turns out we do. While many people have heard by means of the internet about Baalbek's stones and how aliens must have moved them or given humans the technology to move them, very few people know that a 1,500 ton stone was moved without modern cranes or technology in the 18th century. That's the 1700s. This is to date the largest stone object ever moved by human hands. Now remember the 1,600 ton stone at the Baalbek Quarry still in the ground? This would be a very good analogy to that one because the assumed weight is very, very close. Now the stone I'm talking about in modern times is called the Thunderstone. It's the pedestal stone under the statue of Peter the Great. According to the St. Petersburg Encyclopedia, quote, the Thunderstone is a single piece of red granite. It was discovered in 1768 in the forest near Kanoyalakta village by a local. Sculptor E. Falconet intended to work it on the spot, but Empress Catherine II ordered that it be delivered to St. Petersburg in its original shape." Unquote. Now incredibly, the Thunderstone was actually moved by manpower using rollers, tracks, and capstans. The tracks placed under it had grooves running their length and they were supported by six inch brass balls. It was basically a ball bearing method of moving the stone. The stone was pulled by two large capstans turned by a team of 36 men. They were able to move it 150 meters per day. They only had 100 meters of track though, so the tracks were taken apart behind the stone once it passed over and then reassembled in front of the stone. So they did the move in the winter as well when the ground was frozen, otherwise the weight would have sank into the ground and made it impossible. We not only have written descriptions of the task, how this was done, but the whole process was captured in a painting. The Thunderstone weighed twice what the Trilithon stones at Baalbek weigh, and weighs roughly the same as the newly discovered stone at the quarry site. The move of the Thunderstone in the 18th century, with simple engineering methods, has not gone unnoticed by archaeologists and engineers interested in Baalbek. 
The analogy of the Thunderstone moved in the 18th century has led to a workable explanation for how the Trilithon stones were moved into position at Baalbek. Remember, those were only 800 tons, whereas the Thunderstone was 1,500 tons. First, a note of context is important. In his excellent summary of the engineering at Baalbek, Aaron Adair provides an important note of context for the use of capstans and Baalbek. Below the three Trilithon stones of the Temple of Jupiter's foundation, archaeologists discovered, quote, part of a drum to a column, unquote. Now, ancient columns were erected in stacked pieces. Each circular piece is called a drum. Think of piling thick pieces of bologna or coins atop each other to form a column, and you have the idea. This is how the Greeks and the Romans built their columns. They're in sections. The circumference of the drum underneath, important point, underneath the Trilithon stones corresponds to the columns used for the Temple of Jupiter. So this was likely a leftover or no longer useful piece of one of those columns. And since it's under the Trilithon stones, the drum would have had to have been put in place before or at the same time as the temple columns, which are positively Roman. This means Roman technology was used for the Trilithon stones, and that is an important clue. One of the major studies of the massive Trilithon stones at Baalbek and the engineering behind them is the work of Jean-Pierre Adam. Now, Adam wrote in French, and his French article on this subject is located on the web page that corresponds to this particular episode on the Fringe Pop 321 website. Adam proposed how capstans and rollers could quite coherently have been used at Baalbek to move those stones, just like their later application to move the heavier thunderstone. First, the blocks are undergirded by a series of logs as they were cut from the quarry. The series of logs serves the same purpose as the two tracks that were used to move the thunderstone in the 18th century. Once atop the log rollers, the stones were propelled by means of a series of capstans. Now, Adam Adair, citing Jean-Pierre Adam, makes a few comments on these visuals you've just seen. First, quote, In antiquity, the Trilithon is comparable to the largest stones at the modern Wailing Wall, namely the Western Stone, massed at around 520 tons, which we know, positively, was put into place during the Julio-Claudian dynastic period, starting under King Herod. In other words, a stone of a bit smaller mass than the Trilithon stones was placed during about the same time as the great Baalbek stones were." Unquote. Second, ramps were unnecessary at Baalbek due to a slight downhill to the location of the Trilithon stones. As Adair notes, in the illustration of the stones being pulled with the capstans, quote, the soil marked four is temporary during the construction, and afterwards it will go away. It is only the soil behind the wall that will remain, and on the outside, the ground level will be where it is. It is marked three. Now, what we've done in this episode is to take a known analogy, the instance of moving the Thunderstone in the 18th century without modern equipment by rollers, and take a look at how that was done, and then reimagine the same technology being used at Baalbek. Again, there's obviously no modern machinery in play there. What the analogy shows, and what the data show, is that aliens and a race of giants are not needed to provide a very workable solution as to how immense stones, even to the size of the Trilithon stones of Baalbek, could have been moved. Not only is the necessary technology known to have been used by the builders of the Temple of Jupiter, the Romans, but the principles were applied in a known 18th century example, the Thunderstone. Thanks for watching this episode of Fringe Pop 321. I hope it was informative and I hope you'll come back and watch more episodes. Please visit our website to get resource material, not only for this episode, but for all of our episodes. And if you're interested in supporting what we do here at Fringe Pop 321, go to fp321.com forward slash S, the letter S, and come back and watch some more because what you know may not be so.